After seeing this, it's hard to believe that flies are really that good at navigation, though they actually are. How can we use flies as navigation devices? Well, it's simple. You just need to study at the University of Queensland for eight years, dedicate the next 16 years of your life to science, make 36 scientific publications. That's it. Now you can invent a fly navigator. Meet Trevor J. Wardle. This incredible discovery was made thanks to him and several other people. Imagine you are in the middle of a desert. Well, anything can happen, right? Of course, you have no idea where you are, where to go next, and what to do in general. All you see is sand below and blue sky above. Nothing but sand all the way up to the horizon. Wait, don't panic. You still have a smartphone in your pocket, and using GPS, you manage to find your way to the nearest settlement. You can relax now. While on your way, you spot ants. They run back and forth across the sand, but they seem to know exactly where they're going. How's this possible? How come ants can understand which direction is wrong or right, especially since all they see is sky and sand? I mean, they're insects, tiny, very primitive creatures. Is there a place for a natural compass in their tiny heads? Given that a human, the pinnacle of evolution, can't always find his way around. Yet monarch butterflies and locusts stay on the right course while migrating across entire continents. Bees, like ants, have no problem finding their way to their colony even if they end up several hundred feet away from it. To find out how the insects do this, scientists run, well, a rather weird experiment. They tied fruit flies to metal pins and suspended them in a magnetic field. This setup was placed on the roof of the building so that the insects have zero visual landmarks, and then the scientists turned on the cameras. I won't bore you with complex calculations and intermediate findings. I'll go straight to the point. Turned out, fruit flies use patterns of polarized light to navigate and lose their sense of direction only when covered with a special filter. The structure of the human eye doesn't allow us to do the same. But for insects, including ants, that's as easy as it gets. Back in the 1920s, observing the navigational skills of desert ants for the first time, the Swiss entomologist Felix Sanchi performed a series of experiments. They showed that ants can use the sun to find their way back to the colony. Moreover, when the scientists blocked the sun and reflected a patch of blue sky for the ants to see, they changed direction, as if they got confused. Again, due to the polarization of light, which is essential for the wayfinding skills of insects. Their compound eyes actually see the world in a completely different way than humans do. In fact, some researchers believe that if we use polarization, we'd be able to navigate in space much better. Well, I don't know. I believe the world through the eyes of an insect looks like an endless hallucination induced by some substances. <sighs> In short, I couldn't live like that. Though humanity would do well to learn what insects already know how to do, if only to produce smart drones and robots. Let me explain what I mean. Modern robotics typically uses expensive extra sensors to prevent devices from colliding with obstacles. All flies need to do is, well, be flies. And look at the sun. Flies manage several things at once. Stay on target, be aware of their position in space, analyze obstacles. No wonder scientists, including Trevor J. Wardle, are trying to somehow use these abilities of insects for the benefit of mankind. In particular, neuroscientist Wardle has already achieved some success here, analyzing how tiny flies solve complex navigational tasks. But this is not enough. If we manage to understand exactly how insect perception works, we could make much cooler robots and advanced drones. Well, so far we have this. Wow. You may have heard that the drone in this video was designed to deliver mail. Mail carrier drones? That's a great idea. They can quickly deliver packages to remote regions and they don't even need roads. It's a win-win, but only until those drones crash. In order for them to navigate through a densely populated city, or even through a forest, they require a lot of computing power and navigational capabilities. Usually drones navigate in space using computer vision, but this method is imperfect. If the object is slightly out of place, the drone will crash into it. What about GPS? Drones rely on signals from the system, and if there are none, they simply won't know where they are. Drones can also get confused when GPS signals bounce off obstacles. In short, there are many issues. Now imagine drones that can navigate just as good as flies. And you know what? 
looks like we'll get there soon. Although it didn't start with drones, people just built a robot to better understand how insects fly. Back in 2018, researchers from the MAV lab in the Netherlands created an insect-like robot. They were actually going to thoroughly investigate how fruit flies move in the air, so they assembled a robotic one. Four wings flapping, 17 beats per second, only one ounce of weight. Basically, it looks a bit like a big fly. A very big and very weird one. Whatever the case, the drone flies at about 15 miles an hour, can perform various air stunts and make 180 degree turns, just like a fly. Just imagine the potential of this invention. If commercial drones can do the same, we'll have quite a comfortable world where we can deliver, well, anything we want, anywhere we want. Lightweight, maneuverable, safe insect drones. It's like a dream. Although actually, insects aren't the only creatures on the planet that can fly and have an amazing built-in compass. There are also birds, and many of them also cover great distances without any GPS. How do they do it? Do they also use polarization? But the eyes of birds are clearly different from the eyes of flies. As usual, I asked Steve. Steve asked Google, and this is what we found. Birds use external cues available to them during travel like magnetic field and stars. I've already mentioned the magnetic field more than once, so I won't dwell on it. What about the stars? Birds like reed warblers, tiny creatures weighing only 0.4 ounces, use them for navigation. From April to October, reed warblers live all around Europe, but they prefer to spend winter in Africa, south of the Sahara. This, of course, is not the longest migration route on the planet, but it's unlikely that an unprepared person without a map and compass would be able to make such a journey and not get lost along the way. I'd get lost for sure. Where is, where is the intercom? Scientists performed a series of experiments to find out how important stars really are for birds during their migration. Turned out that without a starry sky, reed warblers, like some other species, simply couldn't find the right direction. The researchers obscured the view of the birds, and they were lost. It's not like it gets too dark without stars, it's just that without visual landmarks, it's not clear where to go. But what struck me the most were the birds in the planetarium. Yes, researchers placed the birds under artificial stars, and even that was enough for the animals to understand in which direction to migrate. So far, we have no idea exactly how many different species of birds navigate using stars during their travels, most likely a lot of them. And judging by the discoveries made over the past few years, not only birds have this ability. Take at least a dung beetle. These insects have a very limited visual field, but they can still see the Milky Way. It sounds weird. I couldn't believe it when I read it. Still, if you put a small hat on a dung beetle, it'll get lost. I'm serious. Here's a photo. Even a tiny creature like this needs to see the sky. The scientists took the beetles to the planetarium. I'm starting to think they brought everyone they could find there. So the scientists took the beetles to the planetarium and found out the insects use the moon to find their way. If you turn off the moon and plunge the beetles into darkness, they'll be lost. But if you turn on only the Milky Way, the beetles will find their way again. Just think about it. Starlight tens of thousands of light years away is still strong enough to give directions even to a tiny dung beetle. I can't wrap my head around it. And of course, I just have to mention the obvious. Excessively bright lights in cities mess up navigation for dung beetles. Yes, humans are threatening wildlife again. You must have noticed it's very hard to see the stars if there's many lanterns around. The insects have the same problem. Actually, you can understand them. Imagine the sailors of the past who could only navigate by stars and suddenly those stars just disappear. Well, people are smarter than dung beetles because they found so to speak, other life hacks for navigation. Among other things, they observe the birds. These are very ancient techniques that are still used. For example, on the islands of Polynesia, some seabirds, like the white tern, fly out to sea every morning to fish and return to land at night. People looking for land sail opposite the birds in the morning or with them at night. Simple and brilliant. It's also believed that the Polynesians, like many seafaring peoples, kept birds that could find the shore. One theory is that travelers took frigate birds with them. The thing is, the feathers of this bird become wet and useless if it lands in water. 
That is, the frigate bird, which was released in the middle of the sea, has only two options. Fly to land or return to the boat, if it was too far from it. That's how travelers determined in which direction the land was, and then simply followed the frigate bird. It's like a GPS navigator with wings. But perhaps it'd be unfair if I mention birds, flies, ants, even dung beetles, and not say a word about dogs. Because man's best friends also know a thing or two about finding their way. In 2015, Rachel Kaufman decided to adopt a dog named Hank. The plan was to take care of the animal for a few days, then send him to a foster family. But when Hank's new owners left him at home alone, the dog miraculously opened the door, escaped, and returned to Rachel. It took the dog two days to travel almost 11 miles in a meandering path through the whole city. But by some miracle, he reached his destination. Just think about it. Hank spent less than a week with Rachel, but still managed to find his way back. How is that even possible? Traveling 11 miles and returning to the place where you've only been once seems impossible. Maybe for a human. It's not that long of a distance for a dog. If it walked from the house and back, it would simply follow its own scent. No one would be surprised if I say dogs have a damn good sense of smell. But even if the dog goes beyond, let's say, the range of its scent, that is, it really ends up far from home. It still relies on its nose. For example, it can smell some familiar dog it once met in the park. This may lead the animal to a familiar person or some object with a familiar smell, like a restaurant trash bin. Step by step, the dogs find their way home, even if they are very, very far away from it. Will humans be able to use these canine skills to design some kind of scent-guided drones? Barely. Is this a cool ability? Definitely. See you later.